There's no man-made disaster quite as haunting and legendary as the meltdown at Chernobyl. There are horror stories that'll creep us out forever. These are 20 creepy stories from Chernobyl that will haunt your dreams. Number 20. Black Bird of Chernobyl Legend has it that in the days leading up to April 26, 1986, a supernatural creature was seen in the sky over Chernobyl by many of the men in the nuclear power plant's control room. They also claim to have seen this terrifying creature just before the explosion. However, now it's become one of those fables that's difficult to investigate because it's based on the stories of people who died due to radioactive contamination. It all started when five workers claimed to have seen a large, dark, headless creature with gigantic wings and red eyes of fire. From then on, the Chernobyl workers realized that their experiences were strangely similar, some suffering from horrible nightmares while others received threatening phone calls. These encounters were not only limited to the workers, but also to the people who lived around the nuclear power plant, who began to experience a series of strange events that revolved around the sightings of a mysterious creature, also described as dark and with large wings and piercing red eyes. People affected by the phenomena also experienced nightmares and had encounters with the winged beast. Some of the workers reported their strange experiences to facility supervisors, but there was little they could do, even if they had been willing to take action. Then, in April, disaster struck. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the odd topic. This is the man that decided to stay in Chernobyl. This guy in the middle refused to leave, despite what had happened. As you can see, he totally lost his mind. People aren't sure if it was the isolation or radiation that drove him off the edge. What do you think? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag OddTopic. Number 19. Performers were brought in to calm local residents and contracted radiation sickness themselves. As the disaster occurred, the Soviet government immediately gathered musicians, singers, and dancers to perform for the village people in Pripyat and surrounding areas. Mere hours after the meltdown commenced, the bus full of artists entered the exclusion zone at Checkpoint Dityatki. The group of people were never told of the extreme dangers of entering that area, and they were given strict orders to not speak to any local residents. And thus, a large group of people that could have been perfectly spared of a horrendous death by radiation sickness were sent to a radioactive zone without their knowledge or consent. Imagine not knowing a disaster of such magnitude has taken place, yet seeing the strange workings of the radioactivity all around you. Everyone was sick and dying, quarantined, and not allowed to leave the zone. Some believed the world was ending. It was bad. After a little while, the performers also resigned to the fact that they too would die a painful and unnatural death. That may have been the reason why they all decided, as dead men and women do, to give the absolute best performances of their lives. All the amazing artists died, all but one. He goes by the name of Yuri, and he managed to escape the night after the show. He saw a soldier on his way out, but he let him go. Shortly after escaping the USSR, he became blind due to the radiation. Number 18. The Ghost of Chernobyl as almost all places where a lot of people died suddenly and untimely, Pripyat is an extremely haunted site. These are not your ordinary Victorian-era ghosts, though. They all lived and breathed during the late 80s. And so their fashion sense and appearance is not quite the same as the ones we hear about in medieval castle stories. Andrei Karsikov, a nuclear physicist from New York, had the pleasure, or the misfortune, of running into such a ghost while he was visiting the area of Chernobyl back in 1997. Karsukov later told his story. He went to the power station at 7.30 a.m. and went to the reactor number 4 sarcophagus, which is where the explosion occurred. Evidently, he wasn't allowed to go inside due to radiation, but as he took radiation readings, he heard someone screaming for rescue from a fire inside. He ran upstairs to tell someone, but they said that when he entered the reactor control room, he was the first person to open that door in three years. The only way to get inside the old reactor is through the doors that he had just come in through. In addition, if someone had gone inside the reactor when he wasn't looking, they would have tripped an alarm that goes off when the reactor door is opened mechanically. The reactor, although archaic at the time, still required a password and a handprint, yet someone or something was inside screaming. Later that evening, as he ate with his colleagues, they all figured 
figured there was a power surge or something. Then, just as someone said that, the light turned off. Number 17. The Chernobyl Amusement Park it's difficult to mash together modern history's most devastating nuclear disasters and an amusement park where people go to enjoy themselves and live their best life. That's why the fact that there's still an abandoned carnival within the exclusion zone is nothing more than unsettling and eerie. But nevertheless, it is there. The Pripyat Amusement Park was a brand new project that was supposed to have its grand opening on May 1, 1986, just in day for May Day celebrations. Now, for obvious reasons, this never happened, of course. So not not only is this carnival in one of the most lethal places on Earth, but it actually never opened. It has never been used. Nobody has ever been in these rides. Most poetic, isn't it? Actually, this extreme dichotomy is such a powerful one that the most iconic symbol of Chernobyl is its massive and abandoned Ferris wheel. That attraction would have brought so much joy and good memories for all the families living in Pripyat, but it never had the chance to do so. Today, the entire park has been reclaimed by nature, with trees and plants growing everywhere. It truly is a haunting place. And for some reason, the area right under the Ferris wheel has one of the highest levels of radiation in the entire exclusion zone. In a way, it was a good thing that it wasn't full of children when the incident occurred. Number 16. The Soviet government sent in soldiers when the meltdown destroyed robot cleaning crews. After the robot sent in to do the dirty job almost died immediately, what better option than to send in human beings, right? The thing is, if they didn't, the damage would have been a lot more catastrophic. The accident expelled insanely large amounts of radioactive materials into the atmosphere that formed a huge toxic cloud that spread over much of Eastern Europe, Western Europe, and even some regions of North America. For this reason, the government of the former USSR, advised by the team of scientists led by Valery Legasov, made the decision to recruit many voluntarily with exacerbating patriotic values, hundreds of thousands of people to work on containment and cleaning tasks in the affected area. Those people were nicknamed the liquidators of Chernobyl. But who were these liquidators, really? Well, they were a special corps that was made up of firefighters, workers, scientists, specialists from the nuclear industry, mining engineers, geologists, and miners, as well as soldiers specially prepared for an eventual atomic war due fundamentally to their knowledge and handling of potentially radioactive substances. According to official reports and data, the total number of liquidators were approximately 600,000, although other sources put the figure at a range between 750,000 and 900,000. Be that as it may, the vast majority were volunteers, and many of them really didn't know what they were going to face and the possible consequences that this would have on their health. However, some of them, especially those who were nuclear scientists and engineers, despite the government's silence, did have an idea of the danger they were going to live with and the implications that this could have on their own health. Number 15. The Basement in Hospital 126 of the hundreds of thousands of brave people that had the horrific yet crucial task of putting out fires knowing that they would all get lethally exposed to radiation, not many survived. They all died shortly after, but while they were hard at work to save the rest of the world, they used the basement of the Pripyat Hospital to change their protective gear. They did so in a room numbered 126, and this room has been dubbed the Hell Room, because this is where those brave liquidators' radioactive clothing was abandoned. The protective suits have been sitting there ever since, resulting in the basement becoming one of the most radioactive places in the entire exclusion zone. This same hospital also took in the first victims of the disaster, and all their clothing and the objects they carried were sent to the basement. 35 years later, the radioactive clothing is still there, emitting about 4 rads per hour, which exceeds the norm by hundreds of thousands of times. Today, it is strictly forbidden to visit the hospital basement without the proper protective gear and a highly trained guide. The Ukraine the Ukrainian government does not issue many passes to this particular section of Chernobyl, and it's easy to understand why. Number 14. Chernobyl's Mutant Animals now, of course, after a radioactive disaster of this magnitude, there's bound to be some weird after-effects on wildlife. In all the nearby regions surrounding the power station, animals were being born with the most gruesome and devastating mutations as a result of the massive amounts of radiation. As you can imagine, these unfortunate animals didn't live for very long, and they also couldn't reproduce, which actually put a lot of local species in danger. But it was only when some scientists went back to the immediate areas around the power station that they discovered the most severe cases. 
what they saw would make headlines all over the world. They saw cow calves with a pair of legs growing out of their neck. Others had been born without an upper jaw and were unable to eat. They saw a fawn with six pairs of legs, even birds with two heads. These deformities made the animals' lives a total misery. Eventually, the deformities dialed down, all until 1989 when the number of deformities unfortunately spiked again. Scientists believe it could be a result of radiation released from the sarcophagus intended to isolate the nuclear core. In 1990 alone, around 400 deformed animals were born. Most deformities were so severe that the animals only lived a few hours. Number 13. Chernobyl HIV There was a terrible rumor going around that the survivors of the Chernobyl disaster and their relatives had some kind of contagious illness. They called it the Chernobyl HIV. They said that this disease could be spread to healthy people and it was very serious. But as it turns out, none of it was true. But according to Glenn Browder, a former congressman, this horrific stigma impacted the local economy in a very negative and devastating way, as many companies were reticent to invest in the affected areas. The fake claim also contributed to the further isolation of the people that had already been through enough pain as it is, losing loved ones and their homes due to the meltdown. Because of that malignant rumor, the Chernobyl incident is now affecting three generations of people, with the latest being the grandchildren of Chernobyl. In fact, reports dating back to 1990 already used the term Chernobyl AIDS, referring to the increase in immune deficiency diseases in the aftermath of the disaster. There's no reason to ostracize a group of people that have been to hell and back, especially because of an untrue rumor. Number 12. They buried him barefoot. The tragic death of Chernobyl firefighter Vasily Ignatenko. He was a Soviet firefighter, a liquidator in the Chernobyl nuclear accident. As department commander of the second independent paramilitary fire station for the protection of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, he was directly involved in extinguishing the fire that broke out at the plant on the night of April 26, 1986. At the scene, Ignatenko put out fires on the roof of the reactor building where numerous small fires had been started by superheated pieces of graphite, zirconium, and other components. The high level of radioactivity present in the ceiling however, quickly began to take its toll. Ignatenko and the others inhaled irradiated smoke and worked amid mounds of ejected nuclear material and soon began to experience the initial effects of acute irradiation syndrome. Firefighters climbing to assist them met them halfway up the fire escape as they struggled down the steps, vomiting uncontrollably and unable to fully support themselves without the help of others. His wife, who was pregnant at the time, came to watch him die and say her last goodbye. His body was so swelled up that they weren't able to find a suit or a pair of shoes that would fit him. Due to the fact that his body was still radioactive during the visit, she gave birth to a baby girl that only survived for a few hours. Number 11. Mutant Zombies Stalk Pripyat Today, 30 years after the blast at Chernobyl, people are still scared and spreading around urban legends. One common hoax is that the disaster mutated humans into flesh-eating monsters that will devour any visitors or researchers that cross their paths. Ring a bell? Yeah, they're talking about zombies. Post-nuclear disaster zombies, to be more precise. The piece of evidence that was invading the internet was a grainy video shot from a helicopter where you could see a zombie ripping a man apart limb from limb. But as it turned out, that wasn't exactly evidence as much as it was a clip from a 2007 Ukrainian video game called Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. Great game. In the game, there was a second disaster some 20 years after the first one during repopulation efforts, and that's when mutations in DNA created the brain-hungry zombies. As you may have guessed, someone posted the video on YouTube passing it for real, and thus the urban legend was born. But rest assured, there are no zombies in the exclusion zone, nor were there ever. That's just not how radiation mutation works. The idea of nuclear zombies was also revisited in a horror flick called Chernobyl Diaries, where a group of disaster tourists visit Pripyat only to get savagely attacked by zombies. Number 10. An entire village was bulldozed, only its kindergarten remains standing. Located only four kilometers south of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, Kopachi was a small and prosperous town when the accident occurred. Its population of 1,114 inhabitants was mainly young workers and families. As a result of the catastrophe, the entire village was heavily contaminated, so that in addition to being evacuated, all its wooden houses had to be demolished and buried. Since then, it has remained underground.
Burial was not the best solution, as both buildings and contaminated land were buried in hastily dug pits, allowing radioactive isotopes to seep into the earth and pollute the waters. The authorities never acknowledged the fact that these highly contaminated houses transmitted radiation to the groundwater, allowing for the problem to continue without a solution. All that remains of the old village today is a slowly crumbling nursery school and a ceramic memorial honoring the heroes of World War II, the maintenance of which is carried out by the staff of the power station. Nearby are a series of mounds topped by a sign of radioactivity. That is the only evidence of what was the location of the houses within the town. Number 9. The Elephant's Foot the Chernobyl basement that has the honor of being the most dangerous place in the world. Could you imagine a place where spending an hour in it causes death? That place exists, and to this day, it remains one of the most mysterious areas in the world. When Reactor 4 began to act unexpectedly, suffering a considerable increase in power and leading to overheating of the core, despite the work to try to stop the problem, the situation led to a brutal explosion of accumulated hydrogen that was the most serious nuclear accident in history, with 31 direct deaths due to the deflagration and more than 200,000 due to radiation. However, once the situation was stabilized, it wouldn't be until many weeks later that the real consequences of what happened began to be known. And in one of those visual inspections, many months after the explosion, the unexpected was found. The elephant's foot. The result of the explosion was corium, a material consisting of the mixture of nuclear fuel, fission products, control rods, structural materials of the affected parts of the reactor, products of its chemical reaction with air, water, steam, and molten concrete from the floor of the reactor room. All this ended up in the same place, a mysterious basement where a huge amount of polluting material was accumulated, which access to this day is still a pipe dream. Number 8. Aliens Saved Us From An Even Worse Fate in the wake of the most horrific disaster in human history, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant became a hotspot for UFO sightings. There are many reports of bizarre aerial phenomena in the exclusion zone, as well as the nearby Ukrainian capital city of Kyiv. It is only now that a Russian newspaper, through information about the reports made by the Soviet Union at the time, affirms that the accident could have been much worse if the UFOs hadn't helped. The Pravda newspaper claims that numerous witnesses saw a UFO fly over for six hours when the accident Accident occurred. According to one of them, a strange fireball of about 7 meters in diameter was located about 300 meters from the reactor for several minutes. Suddenly, the aircraft turned off its lights and headed north. They claim that these UFOs helped reduce the impact of the nuclear accident. During the explosion, reactor number 4 was seriously damaged, and if it had exploded, we'd be talking about a Ukraine that would have been devastated by radiation. In addition, much of Europe would have been plunged into an invisible threat, with millions sick or even dead. The publication claims that these UFOs reduced radiation levels to save humanity. Number 7. Why Hundreds of Thousands of Women Ended Their Pregnancies After Chernobyl after the disaster, there was a lot of misinformation and radiophobia going around. People were in an absolute state of panic. That was one of the reasons why hundreds of thousands of women, terrified of birth defects, decided to terminate their pregnancies. The true story of Lyudmila Ignatenko, wife of national hero Vasily Ignatenko, made headlines all over the world. He was one of the first responders at reactor number 4 and died almost immediately. His wife gave birth to a baby girl that he had wanted to name Natashenka, but she only lived for four hours. She sadly died from radiation-induced congenital heart disease and cirrhosis because she was exposed to a radioactive father's corpse while she was still in the womb. After stories like this one hit the news, most people, including doctors, felt that they couldn't trust authorities to tell the truth anymore. As a result, tens of thousands of women opted to end their pregnancies with abortions to save their children from the pain of radiation. In fact, doctors all over Western Europe were advising women to go through with the procedure, mistakenly advising them that the radiation posed a significant significant health risk to their unborn children. Number 6. A generation of so-called stalkers romanticize the ruins. There's a bizarre subcultural phenomenon among the Russian and Ukrainian youth nowadays. These young people, almost all of whom are men, romanticize the apocalyptic environment of the exclusion zone. 
They are known as stalkers. They spend their time sneaking in to explore buildings, sleep in the ruins, and just hang out in the post-disaster area. They even bring Giger counters with them to see how much radiation they expose themselves to. Stalkers chose their name after characters from the novel Roadside Picnic, which was subsequently turned into a classic Soviet film directed by none other than Andrei Tarkovsky. In the film, the stalkers are thieves who sneak into so-called zones to harbor lethal phenomena, places to which authorities have forbidden entrance. The parallels are quite obvious. They consider it a post-apocalyptic romance, but they are pursued by the police, and they're not really fond of journalists either. The concept of fun changes from generation to generation, but these kids are entering areas with lethal doses of exposure just for fun. Number 5. Chernobyl's Ruined Photography is Fake We've all seen the iconic photos of abandoned Chernobyl, all gloomy and eerie, but apparently they're not real. According to photographer Darman Richter, they're all a facade meant to make money off of people who love ruin porn, as he calls it. Richter visited Pripyat himself, and he says the city was desolate, sure, but it does not look like the photos found online. In his opinion, these pics have been manufactured by dishonest photographers to look more chilling, creating the perfect real-life horror. He even saw countless visitors moving items around and repositioning furniture for a better shot, like the famous pic of the little dolls and stuffed bears on the bare metal frame bed. This is wrong for many reasons. One must never mess with someone else's suffering. But these people are also profiting off of disaster tourists, which he believes are approximately 10,000 a year. Number 4. Seven Survivors Seek Immortality Story has it that a Russian scientist that somehow managed to survive the nuclear disaster ended up moving to a small Greek island called Gavdos. He took with him six other survivors. When I say small island, I mean there are only 50 permanent residents there. Now, after going through such a horrific and traumatic experience, it's perfectly understandable to just move to a paradisiac island and live a quiet and simple life. But it would seem that some people believe that the scientist moved there seeking eternal life, which he would use to take over the entire world. There's more to the story than meets the eye. In Greek mythology, the Gavdos Island is thought to be the real Ogygia, which was Calypso's mythical island home where the sorcerers kept Odysseus captive for seven years. Today, they are known as the Immortality Commune of Gavdos, and they say they work on various inventions from inside their compound. They have seven acres of land that were given to them by a priest and are reportedly very kind to the other island residents. Currently, they are building a temple they call the Temple of Apollo. Number 3. Fatalistic Youth is an Unexpected Side Effect of the Meltdown 35 years after the disaster, reports say that negative effects of release radiation are far less than previously thought. In other words, it's safer than they predicted. However, the impact on the psychology of those living in the area surrounding the exclusion zone is another story. There was a two-year study conducted by hundreds of scientists, economists, and health experts from Belarus, Russia, and Ukraine. A group called the Chernobyl Forum commissioned it with the help of the United Nations. The results are terrifying. They concluded that the population was suffering something they called paralyzing fatalism, which means an extreme lack of confidence, lack of control over their futures, and overtaking fatalistic behavior. Among this group of people, stress-related illnesses are very common, and it affects a large part of the population in Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine. After all, a traumatic disaster doesn't only have a physical aftermath, the psychological well-being is equally important. The report concluded that the government must imperatively find ways to inform their publics about the Chernobyl accident in order to address the fears and myths still connected to it. Number 2. Chernobyl was a cover-up the Soviets were extremely paranoid about the U.S. launching a missile attack against Chernobyl. And I mean, who wouldn't be? The U.S. weren't particularly shy with their nuclear attacks, and it was the Cold War after all. So the Soviets decided to build an over-the-horizon radar in 1976 designed to detect an intercontinental missile attack. They named it Duga-3. On April 21, 2021, Oleksandr Tachenko, the Minister of Culture and Information Policy, listed the radar as a protected monument for preservation. But during the Cold War, Duga-3 was one of the favorite topics of conversation for the conspiracy theorists. In 1976, radio listeners started hearing a very mysterious signal during their radio programs all throughout Europe. 
Apparently, it sounded like a continuous tapping sound. At first, it was just annoying, but nothing more. Although, shortly after, the mysterious sound started interfering with emergency aircraft communication. Upon investigation, they realized that the signal was coming from the other side of the Iron Curtain. They nicknamed it the Russian Woodpecker because of the tapping sound. Apparently, the disturbance was coming from a place that was labeled on the map as a children's camp inside the woods surrounding Chernobyl. It was, of course, a Soviet military base, and the signal was coming from Duga 3. Lots of people actually believe that Duga 3 was an instrument for mind control, although no evidence of that has ever surfaced. Number 1. The Largest Object Ever Moved by Humans now, mankind has built enormous structures that are still standing today. The Eiffel Tower or the pyramids come to mind. But what about moving a whole solid object? Can you guess what it is? It's actually a sarcophagus, but not the kind that you bury people in. No, this one is, let's say, slightly larger. This sarcophagus is actually the shelter structure they use to completely cover nuclear reactor number four of the power plant. The sarcophagus is made out of solid steel and concrete, and it is, for lack of better words, insanely massive. More specifically, 400,000 cubic meters of concrete and 7,300 cubic meters of metal framework. Yeah, it's big. It was designed to limit the radioactive contamination of the environment. This amazing structure was able to lock in 200 tons of radioactive lava like corium, 30 tons of highly contaminated dust, and 16 tons of uranium and plutonium. I mean, it is hands down impressive. By 1996, the structure had so much radioactive exposure that it was showing clear signs of deterioration. They had to go back in to reinforce it. The new safe confinement is 108 meters high and 162 meters long, a span of 257 meters and a lifetime of a minimum of 100 years, and it weighs 36,000 tons. As you can see, nuclear power is all fun and games until a reactor blows up and radically impacts the whole world. What about you? Do you think that we should all start using other sources of power after watching this video? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!